And I was just out of college, and I had never really uh, spent too much time in New York, but my good friend from college, Neil, moved to New York. We were both huge music fans, and three of our favorite bands were playing in New York in one week. And I recently got a job where I had vacation time. I said, I'm coming for a whole week, and we'll go to all these shows together, and it'll be rock and roll vacation. And we were super excited. And I go to Queens, where he lives. Now, uh, and then we go to these shows, but during the day, he's, he does have to work. He didn't have vacation time yet. So I'm kind of left to my own devices during the day. And uh, I didn't know New York well at all. I had a little notebook of instructions, like um, you go here, you get on this train, this is a, get to this place or that place. So I'm really kind of green under the ears. Is that the <laughs> <laughs> I'm really dumb in New York City, looking at a notebook. Um, anyways, he lived by one of those stops where it's the long um, staircase up to the platform where you wait for the trains. So I arrived there, I think it was the first morning I was left on my own devices. And I see um, a mom, there's a mother there, uh, she's got a baby carriage and then two other kids with her. And she's at the bottom of the stairs and I'm thinking to myself, um, how does she get that carriage up the stairs? And it takes me a few minutes and I'm like, oh, I should offer to help. And so I say, uh, excuse me, miss, can I help you carry the carriage up the stairs? She goes, yeah, like it's taking too long to offer help. <laughs> and so uh, I'm like, okay, whatever, I can get you all that up. Uh, and we carry the baby stroller up the staircase and we all get on the uh, platform to wait for the trains. And there's multiple trains, like not every train that comes by is yours, which is sort of similar to here uh, at some stops. And um, she had a, uh, so the, there's an infant, I don't know the sex of the infant, there's a little girl and there's a little boy. And the boy's name is Tyler. And Tyler is really in the mood to test his mother's patience. And he's like running near the yellow thing. And he's like, ah, ah. and she's like, Tyler, Tyler, get back here. And he's like not paying any heed. And it's getting more and more heated. She's like, Tyler, Tyler, get back here. And he's like, just like pretending he doesn't hear, dancing, like running back and forth and doing dangerous things. And um, finally she stands up and she's like, Tyler! And I looked at the kid and I saw like, I could almost swear I saw it in his eyes like the rebellious spirit like he birthed in this kid. He's like seven or eight. And he's, and she goes, don't make me walk over there. And he looks at her, she looks at him. The train pulls up. The door is open. Tyler gets on. The door is shut. And the train moves. Now, there was 10 seconds of silence before anyone said anything. And just for dramatic effect, I'm gonna, we're going to spend that 10 seconds of silence. And I'll let you know how that silence was broken. Okay. Somebody call 911! <laughs> She says those words and those words only, and then runs down the stairs, leaving her, her infant in a carriage and the little girl alone at this New York substation, a subway station. And on, I'm on one side of the kids, and on the other side is a girl about my age. And we look at each other, and I'm like, this is what it must feel like first time you meet your arranged marriage? <laughs> we just like, hey, we, with one glance, we're like, we have to do a lot of work. It's going to be hard. <laughs> it was incredible. Like, we weren't even speaking. We were just, like, communicating a lot of information through the eyes. And the little girl is getting more and more nervous. Maybe a tear starts. And, uh, like, we're trying to stay very calm. We're like, your brother's so great. They're going to they're gonna stop that train at the next station. We'll get them off. Everything's going to be fine. And uh, a long time goes by. It's like 10 minutes, and the mom's not back, and we're in charge of these kids. And um, finally, uh, my train pulls up. And I looked at this girl, and I shrugged. And she gave me this look back as if we had been married for 15 years, like, oh, you jerk bag. Go ahead, do what you always do. <laughs> and, uh, I was just like, okay, and I get up and I went and I get on the train and she was in charge of the children. And um, perhaps that's why I'm childless to this day. <laughs> um, and uh, those are my 
Woo!